I'm sure this was a very personal project. I think I know for myself, and I'm sure I'd like to hear from uh, you guys, your first exposure to the prophet, uh, if somebody gave it to me as a gift, which I think it is one of those books that people give to other people. I, it's not, uh, it, it tends to be something that people share. Uh, well, it was given to me in college, and uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't read it before, and the first time I opened it up, I, I had just met a friend, we were just lying on the floor, and we just started reading the book out loud, mm -hmm. very interested in, in the poetry of it. it was, nice to hear out loud, and, and really, as the book went on and on, before even getting to the end, I just like had a very profound reaction to it, a very profound sort of shift mm -hmm. of consciousness where I had this intense feeling of being connected to everything, mm -hmm. and um, that sounds very trite to talk about, but it was very profound for me, and uh, I've carried that with me ever since. It was, you know, one of those books that I just always kept because I think it, it's the kind of book that you could just pull off the shelf and read a few pages and, and get something from it. So, um, it, it, and then it wasn't until one day that someone actually came along and said, hey, would you be interested in doing some kind of a movie based on this? So then that was kind of when I rediscovered it recently. Well, same, same story, really. College, um, it was required reading um, at my drama school. And uh, like a lot of um, poetical works, we were encouraged to read them out loud. And I enjoyed, the, I enjoyed the book, but I don't remember being in any way profoundly hit by it at the time. Mm -hmm. But then when this project came along and I read, I, you know, I read the script and I, and, and I went back to the book, then, you know, as, a, as someone older, a bit more experienced, probably more able to read and understand the, uh, the complexity of, of, of the work, um, it, you know, it was uh, beautiful. It struck me as very beautiful. I um, saw the cover of the book right next to my grandfather's, it, it was on his bedside table always. And um, the, the drawing in the cover of the book is by Khalil Gibran, because he's also an amazing artist. Actually, a lot of the animation uses his, arm, uh, his art, especially on work and keeps transforming it. But um, the, this picture of this man kind of haunted me and it made me think of my grandfather, who was Lebanese. And then he died when I was six. And I was very, very close to him. And I was always wishing that I had got to know him better and that I could have him to ask him questions about things that were going in the family. What would he think? And um, later on, when I was about 18, I found that man again, the, the cover. And I read for the first time, The Prophet. And so I said, can I borrow it? And so when I read it to me, it was as if my grandfather was teaching me about life through this book. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's very true what you say. It's the kind of book that people give and that's how you find it. Mm -hmm. it there was never like a big bar marketing campaign for this book. And actually this is the way it has to happen with the movie <laughs> because we have no money for marketing. <laughs> and I just hope that it's the kind of thing that if it touch you, you know, people will talk about it and, mm -hmm. you know, tell other people to go see it or give it to them, as the DVD as a Christmas, because <laughs> I think this is the only, this is it's the destiny of this piece that it's how it's going to continue to live. I really think that's, that will happen. Uh, I think that this is the 21st you know, century version. They had been trying to do this in live action. And then um, when Clark came along, he had this great idea to do it into animation. But it was half the budget, and it was all poems. And I thought the idea to make it into animation was brilliant because of many reasons. But the freedom that comes from it, I think the, the best way to tell poetry is through music and images. And, um, but for me, because it was so personal, I, I thought it was going to get lost. I didn't think it would be a good idea, only because it's so rich, the poetry, that if you had 13 poems that wouldn't have been also this quality, all of them, because it was half the budget and 13 of them. Um, it's just too much. You cannot really take 
you know, the few things. You don't have to even understand all the poems. Sometimes it's just one phrase that mm -hmm. you needed to hear. That's what you need. You don't need what you don't understand and you don't hear is because it's not what you needed to hear the most. So I was afraid that it was just going to be too heavy. But I was so excited to be able to give life to the poetry through animation. And I believe that the message uh, of the film and of the poetry was very important to tell today. It's not one message, it's many messages. For me also personally, one was that there was a, an Arab writer mm -hmm. that wrote a book that has been, um, he has sold more than 120 million copies around the world and that has united every religion and creed and for many different generations. And I was excited to also bring light to this. I think in a day like today, it was important, like today, no, like five years ago almost. <laughs> and, uh, but then the framing story had to be very, it, it was the, almost the biggest challenge because for all the, the artists, you know, they would get the poem and we promise absolute freedom for them, of course, because they're artists, they wanted to collaborate with an artist like Roger and bounce ideas and create it, you know, in harmony, but at the end, it was, it was their gift for them to do what they wanted. And it was important that it was artists that had different religions, different, different age groups from all over the world. Um, and the money also came from all over the world. We wanted to have the spirit of Khalil Gibran in making of the film, as well as what we were trying to say uh, with the film. But the framing story um, had to be simple enough that the poems could take off and, and go into an extraordinary visual journey. And uh, Roger was very humble about this from the beginning, but it had to be smart enough you know, it had to have important themes, like freedom of speech, a little girl finding her own voice. So that was very, it was very, very challenging for him to write, you know, this story um, in a way that it would be inclusive to everyone and that it would, it would be the frame of these paintings. The first conversation we had was, was about what our goal was, and, and that was to make a film that could appeal, that could be accessible for all ages. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, when I first ag agreed to do this, I was thinking, oh, well, this is going to be some art film for adults, right? <laughs> because it's all philosophy, and, and then, no, no, we're going to make it for everybody. So that was an interesting challenge, you know, yeah. to find a story that uh, allowed a broad age range, the, the idea of having a little girl, Selma came up with the suggestion of having a little girl character. And that one was, was a brilliant idea because she would be a lot of the children's uh, guide mm -hmm. to take them into the story and lead them up to where all these poems would be. And the challenge was to, to write a story that could be light and entertaining at times, but not go off too far so that we could come back and make an easy transition into some rather deep, thoughts, some deep material. Um, so that was the balancing act there. Yeah, you, you've done a lot of other work, but this is, uh, especially this, you're kind of playing the heavy in it. So talk about that uh, process. Oh, very much so the heavy. The profile they gave me was uh, left you in no doubt <laughs> as to uh, the character's weight. Um, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been bigger, by the way. Um, no, I, th I think that the beauty about animation I is that you're you're re not reduced. You 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 have to kind of you, you have to you have to find something very very pure, which is p just the voice. Just find everything that you can play with your body, with your with a glance, with with a sort of physical timing or an attitude. That's all denied you. That's in the hands of the animator. And what the actor has is to, in a sense, focus the vocal quality into something absolutely specific. And of course, when you're sometimes you work before the animation is completed, or sometimes it's afterwards, sometimes you have to match the voice to an existing image. So it's always a very, very different experience. But what was so wonderful about this one 
was that we had a you know we had a great deal of freedom when we were recording and we sort of we played around with different accents different tone we, we thought we should, should he maybe he should be like is he going to be like a some kind of gruff british working class sergeant major or should we make him a bit more exotic we were kind of playing around with stuff and and we we i think we 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 came up with a um a character that, that I, I hope was both tough and and kind of malevolent but at the same time you know i wanted to find the humor because because when i first read the script i have to say it made me laugh a great deal i thought it was very funny and i thought the uh, you know the the, the the attitude of the sergeant was wonderfully kind of uh, pompous and you know and so there was a lot of room for that and and it was just i mean i, I don't know you know the, what you were saying about animation being thought of as just for kids i completely agree with you it, it's it's a very frustrating assumption that people make because there's a lot of work goes into this, a lot of thought, a lot of very careful analyzing and distilling of, of all these different um, ideas and, and, and contributions that all kinds of creative people make. And, there's, uh, and, it, and it comes down to something very, very pure, which is really telling the story in the simplest, most direct way. And when I saw the film, I realized that all the sort of, you know, joshing around we were having in the studio, all the kind of playing around with voices and how about this? What if I do that? What if I do a fart noise here? How about that? You know, all of that is really part of a much bigger um, creative process, you know, and it's, you know, I was saying to Roger just now as we were waiting to come on, you know, when you look at the number of people that were involved in movies like this, it, it, you, you have to pause. It's a wonder movies get made at all. You know, when you think of the amount of dedication and time and 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 effort and commitment people put into it.